Greetings, my friends. I hope you're all well. And welcome to our short little session of our Lenten yoga. It's apart but connected. And so we'll work a little bit with the heart opening poses this time around, just some gentle ones, sort of a gentle centering practice, and then a couple of standing postures, and then we'll end with a nice poem by Joey Harjo. So finding a seat here, maybe any sort of seat that's comfortable for you, maybe a cross-legged position, maybe the legs are extended, and maybe elevating the hips with a blanket or a towel or something that you have at home. And as we get settled, just beforehand I should say, maybe having some blocks or some books in front of you for the standing pieces, and if you have a strap or maybe a scarf or a tie, that might work too for some of our warm-ups. So. And if you don't, we will make do just with our practice in our home space as is. Just again, the main thing, um, same with your home practice or our practice together in person, just make sure you do whatever is safe and kind to your own body. So definitely uh, continue with that. And with that, taking a moment here just to arrive and greet yourself, depending on whatever time of the day it is. And just really finding a comfortable seat here, rooting down through the sit bones and rising up through the crown of the head. Taking a moment to just arrive, taking a deep breath in, expanding the ribs and the chest. And slowly exhaling, just noticing the breath here. Taking a few deep breaths at your own pace. And then bringing both hands to prayer position here, Anjali Mudra at heart center. Just thinking of your heart not only just as a big important muscle, but as a source of compassion and light as we navigate the wilderness this Lent. And slowly releasing the hands here and taking hold of your strap or scarf or tie or whatever it is you're using and taking the hands just about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit longer or wider than that, I should say. And just whatever is comfortable for you here and gently begin to just open up the chest and the front of the body. Staying here for just a few breaths. And on your next inhalation, lengthen the spine and gently twist over towards the right side. Just using the upper and middle back. Passing back through the center, inhale and lengthen, and then twisting over towards the left. Back through the center, we'll do this just one more time, inhale and lengthen, twisting towards the right, be a little bit deeper this time. Passing back through center, inhaling, lengthening, and then over towards the left. Then come back through center, releasing the strap here, and we'll put it off to the side for right now. And then bringing that right hand over towards your right hip, just a few inches away, bringing the left arm overhead, ending a gentle side bend. And then slowly bringing that left arm down around Cross the body and then bringing the right arm overhead. Gently side bending here and taking this rotation just a few more times. Just linking the breath and the movement and warming up the spine here. Do that once more. 
the side bend to the right, and then once more over towards the left. And then we'll come back through the center here and we'll make our way into tabletop pose and begin to work with some cats and some cows. So finding a nice good foundation here, bringing the shoulders over the wrists and the hips over the knees. And beginning with a deep inhale, letting the heart shine forward, drawing the shoulder blades together down the back. And then exhaling, beginning at the base of the tailbone, maybe finding a little bit of space between each vertebrae, rounding like a Halloween cat, puffing out the shoulder blades and creating space. And just finding some of your own cats and cows here. It's the option to close your eyes for a slightly different sensory experience, just to see what that feels like. through to table here, this time walking the knees a little bit behind the hips and walking the hands out a little bit beyond the shoulders so you have a sort of very wide table position here and just beginning to make some circles with the whole body. Maybe they're big, maybe they're small, maybe you want to spend a little time on one side here, maybe you want to pass through child's pose, just finding some natural movements here. And then going through to the other side. Good. And then coming back through to table, removing any props if you happen to be sitting on it or patting your knees. And from our table pose here, we'll gently come all the way down onto our bellies. So keeping the shoelace part of the foot onto the mat here, and coming up onto your forearms, legs can be a little bit wider than the hips. I'll come to the side view in just a second here. And maybe using your upper arms as a mirroring tool, taking hold of opposite ones, pivoting on the elbow, and just finding a gentle thoracic spine, heart and chest opener here as well. Just gently drawing the mat towards you. So just, if this is a lot on your lower back, you can take the legs a little bit further apart. And then another variation for this posture which I'll come to the side to demonstrate, is using blocks or perhaps books or other supports underneath the forearms. And that just goes a little bit deeper in terms of opening the chest. So we bring the blocks underneath the forearms. And again, legs can be a little bit wider apart than the hips for this posture. And on an inhale, pressing the forearms into the blocks or into your mat. Just gently opening up the front of the body here. And then when you've had enough of the Sphinx pose, releasing the blocks. And if you'd like to just counter that briefly, and using the arms to push back, to spend a few breaths in child's pose. So bringing the hips to the heels, sending the breath to the low back, and lengthening the spine here. So from your child pose, we'll come back through to our table and this time, placing that right foot up in between the hands, 
and using the blocks for some support underneath the hands here. And just taking some time to, again, find some movements going back and forth. And then finding stillness once more, and then releasing the blocks if that balance feels right, and bringing the arms out to the sides, again, finding just a very gentle back bend to open the chest a little bit. And then coming back, and as we bring your hands back to the blocks, straightening that front leg, just getting into the hips a little bit here, inhaling, lengthening the spine, exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling back up, and then bringing this right knee back underneath the hips, placing that left foot forward, and again, just going back and forth, just taking some natural movements here. And then once we've found stillness here in our low lunge, releasing the blocks, bringing the arms out to the sides, and opening up the chest. Next inhale, coming back, beginning to straighten the left leg now, taking the toes up towards the ceiling, still ensuring your right knee and hip are in good alignment. Inhaling, lengthening the spine, exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling, coming back up, and from here, placing that front foot flat onto the mat here, turning that back toe under, lifting the knee, and coming just to a gentle forward fold here, supported by the blocks. And then very gently coming up one vertebrae at a time. Head and neck are last. Inhaling both arms up. And exhaling, hands to heart center. Mountain Pose or Tadasana. Nice, strong, solid, and stable. From here, we'll play with just a gentle baby camel pose. So remaining in your Mountain Pose and bringing the hands to the sacral spine. So the sacrum is this triangular bone, your lower back here, just at the base of the spine. And very gently drawing the elbows together and begin to lift the chest and sternum. And creating space between the front of the body, between both shoulders here. And then slowly coming back to mountain pose. And just taking a couple of shoulder rolls here seeing any tension. And then finding stillness once more. Taking a breath in mountain pose, Tadasana. And then stepping the right leg back, preparing for warrior one foot pattern here. So about three feet or so with the back foot pointing toward the top corner of your mat. And then Bending that front knee, keeping the knee over the ankle, and bringing the arms alongside the ears for warrior one. And then bringing the arms to cactus arms, again, opening up the chest. Coming back through to warrior one, and then slowly lowering the arms and just heel toeing or walking that back foot up to meet the front foot. And come to mountain pose, Tadasana once again. Maybe just gently drawing the chin towards the chest to create some length in the spine and elongate the neck. And rounding down through all the corners of the feet. And then slowly 
stepping back to your lunge with your left leg here, taking any time to adjust, maybe giving yourself a little assist so that both hip points are facing forward. Sometimes the back hip tends to like to go back. And then bringing the arms alongside the ears here, lengthening the sides of the body. And then coming into cactus arms here, opening the chest. Noticing the heart. And coming back through to warrior one. Lowering the arms here. Just beginning to heel toe or walk that back foot up to meet the front foot. Finding mountain pose or padasana once more. here, having a block nearby, and we'll step the feet about three feet apart, so maybe roughly a leg's length or so. And we'll do a little bit of a forward fold twisting here. So on an inhale, bringing the hands to the hips and lengthening the spine. And then exhaling, folding forward, this time with a flat back. Then bringing your right palm directly underneath your nose, maybe onto that block or onto the floor if that works for you. And then lifting that left arm up, rotating the ribs toward the side of the room. And using the breath here as well, inhaling, lengthening, exhaling, twisting. And slowly releasing that left arm, bringing that left hand to the block or directly underneath your nose on the floor, lifting that right arm and slowly rotating the chest to the right, drawing the shoulder blades together here. And then slowly coming back down Keeping your block nearby, this time bringing both hands to both hips and coming up with a nice flat spine here. And then from here, taking the feet just so they point out sideways a little bit to about at a 45 degree angle. Bending the knees and bringing the arms to cactus arms or goal post arms once more, finding goddess pose. And bringing the hands to the inside of the thighs and just dropping one shoulder and then the other. Doesn't matter which side you start on for these. Again, just getting into the upper body a little bit. And then finding our nearby block, we'll come up to standing again, and then placing your left foot parallel uh, to the left side of the room here and pivoting on that right foot so that it's pointing straight directly in front of you. Using the block just on the inside of this right foot here. And we'll find triangle pose or trikonasana. So on an inhale, bringing the arms out to the sides, Shifting the hips behind you, reaching, reaching, reaching with that right hand so you can't reach anymore, and then bringing it to a block or your shin. And again, opening the chest here, drawing the shoulder blades together and lengthening the spine. And on an inhale, coming back up. And then coming straight into reverse triangle. So bringing that right upper arm towards your cheek, opening the front of the body here. And then slowly releasing back down, bringing your block with you to the other side and changing the track of the feet. So bringing that right foot now so that it's facing straight ahead and the left foot straight out to the side here. Placing that block just inside the foot, making any adjustments to your stance here. Inhaling arms up, 
shifting the hips behind you and reaching, reaching, reaching forward, coming all the way down, finding our triangle pose on this side. a few breaths here, really rooting down through that left big toe to engage the quad, and then using an inhale and the abdominals coming back up to a reverse triangle here. And then slowly coming back down, Placing your block just off to the side a little bit and bringing both feet now so that they face the front of you and heel toeing the feet back in a little bit. And then from here, we'll come back down to a seated position. Good. And this time we'll keep the legs extended out in front of us and find staff pose or dandasana just for a breath or two. And then relaxing the legs, maybe just windshield wiping the feet here. And then bringing the feet so they're about mat width apart, knees are still bent. And placing the hands either just on the knees or just below them, just finding a couple of cats and cows from this wide legged seated position here. Continuing to focus on the spine and open up the chest. Exhale, drawing the belly towards the spine. Taking a couple of these on your own. And from here, bringing the feet a little bit closer together, finding a nearby block our little bit of abdominal work for the day. So taking your block or perhaps a book, if that is easier, and placing it lengthwise, just between the thighs here, close to the knees is fine. A little bit of an exercise in Navasana or boat pose, so really squeezing the legs here, really engaging the block, and then engaging the abdominals too, and just working to find the spine and the neck and the crown of the head all in the same line here. And if you want to take this posture a little bit further, coming onto your sit bones and then bringing the calves parallel with the floor and just playing with this posture a little bit, boat pose or navasana. And then lowering the legs back down releasing the block. And then from here, we'll come onto our backs, keeping one block nearby, and just making your way onto your back as you're able here. And we'll take one active bridge pose with some arms, and then do a supported bridge pose as well. So on an inhale, lifting the hips, engaging the glutes and the back of the body here. Imagining the body as a bridge to somewhere else. And then lowering back down one vertebrae at a time. And this time we'll incorporate the arms. So on an inhale, lifting the hips, Bringing the arms overhead. And exhaling. Lowering all the way down. Taking a breath here. And then finding your block or your book and keeping it on its very lowest side here. Lifting the hips and sliding the block underneath the sacrum, that lower back again. And just staying here for a bit, noticing any release in the lower back in our supported bridge pose. And maybe staying 
right here. This too is a nice heart and chest opener as well that opens the, the front of the body. Or if you want to find a supported inversion to complement your practice, taking the legs up towards the ceiling, maybe pointing and flexing the feet. Maybe finding a wide-legged knee with the legs. Just staying here for about the next 10 breaths or so. And slowly beginning Lower the legs back down. And then taking a few steps, walking the legs out in front of you even further. They won't straighten all the way, but this is a nice way to sort of bring some length to the tops of the thighs here to counteract all of the sitting that we do. And then gently walking the feet back so that they're directly underneath the knees, lifting the hips, removing the block out from underneath you, and drawing the knees in towards the chest, finding a little lower back massage here. And then from here, We'll prepare for just a short relaxation. A couple of options to make it sort of heart opener focused. If you don't want to, however, and you just want a traditional Shavasana, then just extend the legs out in front of you. Turn the palms upward and just gently come back to the breath here. Alternatively, you can take a folded blanket or a towel or just as well. Place it lengthwise on your mat. You might want a little bit of additional support here for your head and neck, depending on how tall you are. And then just bringing the end of the blanket or towel just to the base of the spine here. And then bringing it along the length of the spine and just using it to elevate the chest a little bit. Legs can either be straight out in front of you or they can be bent here. Maybe mat with the part drawing the knees together to support the lower back a little bit more. So just as you're in your own space, find whatever resting or relaxation pose feels better in your body. And just taking a moment to come back to the breath, gently closing your eyes. This is a poem called What the Heart Can Hold by Joy Harjo. This heart can hold a country, a mountain range, or an island of white birds. As the sun comes up and the sun goes down, there are songs of brokenness and songs of putting back together. In this heart we will be storm and flood or rain of fire. There is walking away and coming together. There are rooms of emptiness that need no breath. There are no rooms at all, only fields of flowers. There is always room for children to play. In this heart are oceans with sailing boats to take you home. As for enemies, let them go their own way. This heart has doorways for leaving for what needs to be left behind. There is always a room for anyone who's gone astray. The heart hammers a song of all of this. There it is beneath your ribs. It will sing you how to live. It will tell you how to forgive. By Joy Harjo. So feel free to stay in your relaxation pose in your own space. Thank you so much for joining me here. The light in me honors the light.